Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio from Boise, Idaho. This is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's episode is brought to you by the support of our listeners. Thanks so much for all your financial support. And now it's time for today's episode, The Topaz Earring Case. Bring on the lot. Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city. For under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is The Lineup. Any place you want, Mr. Kramer, suit yourself. I don't know what's wrong with right here. I sure won't need no ringside seat to pick that thing again. Boy, was she burned up. The minute she cornered my camp, I could tell her. Well, she certainly wasn't mad when I saw her. She was scared. Scared, scared. Well, that was about 45 minutes later, Mr. Kramer, when she went in your drugstore. Yeah, and it can happen in 45 minutes. Hey, I ask you to listen, please. You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Greb, Sergeant Matt Greb. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, then name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, call off the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have her held. The officers who took your name will assist you. They're seated among you. How about you really get some Please leave your there, questions or identifications. When the prisoners leave here, the matron takes them back to the bathroom where they dress back into their jail clothes. That makes it quite difficult to bring them back after they leave here. The questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice. So do not pay too much attention to their answers as we often lie. Bring on the line. All right, girls. All right, this way. Move on over to the end of the stage. That's it. Now turn around and face front. Hands to your side. You, hands to your side. Now look straight ahead. Number one, Georgina Kelso, theft. Ever been arrested before, Georgina? I've been arrested before. Where were you when the officer arrested you, Georgina? He was no officer. It was just a spy. What were you wearing when you tried to leave the store? A dress. What else? Three other dresses underneath. Number two, Colleen Hodges, a soap. Where do you live? That's a good question. Where did you used to live, Colleen? 414 Front Street, third floor. Why did you beat up your landlady? We didn't get along. Number three, Margaret Kenline, open charge. How long have you been in town, Margaret? About eight years. Where are you from? That's her, Lieutenant. That's the one. What do you say, Mr. Graham? Have you ever been arrested? No doubt about it. Sergeant Graham. Yes, Lieutenant. Hold number three for interrogation. Margaret. Say, Ben, I'll be down in communications if you want me. We're letting a couple of them go. Nobody identified them. Okay? Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, here. Here's those cigarettes you wanted. Oh, thanks, Ben. Uh, sit down, Miss Kenline. Thank you. I'm Lieutenant Ben Guthrie. Uh, you like one of these? Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, Miss Kenline, how long uh, were you engaged to Larry Zimmerman? Lieutenant Guthrie, I... About four months. Four months. The, uh, the cab driver who took you to Zimmerman's place at five this afternoon said you were angry. I was. At Zimmerman? 
Yes. I, I guess it's an old story until it happens to you. I found out this afternoon that Larry had been seeing another woman. It's been going on for weeks, right under my nose. I was humiliated and hurt. Well, when I found out, I, I went to his apartment to really read him off good. Mm-hmm. Now, who is this other woman? You know her? Her name is Edith DeLoca. Lieutenant Guthrie, I, I didn't kill Larry. I didn't do it. <clears throat> you, uh, you have a business here in town, haven't you, Miss Kenline? Yes. A dress shop, isn't it? Run it alone? No, I, I, I have a partner, Mr. Steve. Lord Steve. I see. How's it going? All right. Good. Oh, we're having a style show downtown tonight. Lord's taking care of it. Mm-hmm. You, uh, you stopped in a drugstore at a quarter to six tonight. On the corner opposite Larry's apartment house. The druggist noticed you because you were frightened. I, I, I explained that once. Well, explain it to me, please. Larry's apartment was unlocked. I went in and... He found him. In the bedroom. He'd been stabbed. But why did that take you 45 minutes? I, I don't know. I didn't realize it did. I, I, I was dazed, I guess. I should think you would have been. By the way, who is Rifkin? Rifkin? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, Miss Kenline. Thanks. I guess that's it. The, um... The coroner says Larry Zimmerman died just about five o'clock. Lieutenant Guthrie, may I call a lawyer? Well, sure, sure, if you want to. But I don't believe it's necessary, Miss Kenline. I think we're going to turn you loose. Close the window and sit down, will you? You're making me nervous. Oh, I'd be nervous if I were you, all right. I'd be good and nervous. Close the window, huh? I don't understand it, that's all. I just don't understand it. Understand what? Why you let her go, that Kenline girl? I told you she's being followed. I put Peters on her. Yeah, but even so... Well, we couldn't have held her anyway, not for long. Besides, there's a couple of other items, Matt. That manila envelope they found up there with the name Rifkin on it, for one. Ripped open and empty. If we knew what had been in it. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And then, Matt, from the looks of the bedroom, Zimmerman put up quite a struggle for the boy, say. More than you'd expect if he was fighting with a woman. Even a jealous one, mad enough to kill him? Uh, I don't know, Ben. Well, come on, Matt. Let's go out there and have a look. Move that quick. Hi, sir. Becker. How goes it, Becker? Oh, okay. That wagon just left. Must be about cleaned up. Sergeant Mayo's inside there. Come on. Come on, man. Yeah, I'll take it, boy. Don't catch it. Now. Mayo. Yeah. Oh, hiya, Ben. Mate. Hi. We're just about through. Nothing much. Everything in the place is loaded with prints. Huh? Except the handle of the knife. Where's the bedroom? That door there. Over the way, Ben. Here's something. Uh, an earring. Where'd this come from? Yeah, it was tangled up in the rug under the body. Oh, that's it. I'm not much of a jeweler, but I can recognize the real thing, and that's it, all right. A topaz. <laughs> Pay the rent for a few months. You say you found this earring in the rug under the body? Excuse me, sir, but uh, Sergeant Mayo, that guy's back again. That huh? same guy in the gray Hamburg hat. He just went past down the hall. Now, what guy is this? Oh, some character that's been kind of hanging around for the last half hour. I guess that's... Yeah, never mind, Mayo. We'll talk to him. Where'd you go, Becker? Uh, down the hall to your left there, Lieutenant. There's a lounge down that way. All right. I'll take it from here. That's good. Over here, though. Uh-huh. That must be the guy there, Ben. Yeah. Well, good evening. Hmm? Oh, uh... Hi. Right. Do you live here in the building? No. We're from the police department. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Grimm. Oh, uh... How do you know? You waiting for someone, Mr. Rifkin? <laughs> I have to give you credit, Lieutenant. And that initial on your tie bar helped. There's been some trouble down the hall, Mr. Zimmerman's apartment. Yeah, that's so I noticed. You uh, seem pretty interested in it, Mr. Ripken. Well, you had my name, Sergeant, so maybe you know why I'm interested. No, we don't. Why are you? Zimmerman owed me some money, Lieutenant. I expected to be paid tonight close to $25,000. That's quite a debt. And it was my money in the first place. 
No profit. I don't follow you. Well, he was a broker, investments. I placed that money with him to be invested. When I found out he was trimmed on his last deal, he took an awful beating. I told him I was pulling my money out before it went, too. Told him that this morning on the phone. Well, he didn't like it, but I... Well, he said he'd have it for me tonight. Zimmerman's been murdered. I guess you figured that. Yes, yes, but, uh... How did you get my name? Do you mind? No. We found it on a manila envelope in his bedroom. Oh, and the money? Well, what about the envelope? The envelope had been opened. It was empty. What? That money's gone? Robbed, huh? Looks that way. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way it looks. Well, I guess that takes care of that. Huh? Uh, just a minute. Where do you live, Mr. Rifkin? We may want to get in touch with you. Oh, uh, sure. I, I hope so. Uh, the Beekman Plaza, room 220. The first name's Walter. Room 220. Okay. Well, I'll smoke then? Uh-huh, thanks. You've got to get back to the lineup, don't you, man? Well, pretty soon. You coming? No. And uh, let me have that earring, Matt. Yeah. I'm going to look up a lady. Mr. Walker, who are you? Police Department, Lieutenant Ben Guthrie. Oh. Well, I'm so glad to know you, Ben. I want to talk to you for a minute, if I may. Right now? I'm in a big hurry, Ben. i got a day. It's important, Mr. Roker. About Larry Zimmerman's death. Oh. I already heard about that. Poor Larry. You don't seem too broken up, Edith. You think it'll help any? No. You're not wearing your earrings, Edith. Hmm? Uh-huh. The pinch mark shows. That's why I'm not wearing them. They pinched, so I took them off. Hey, look, am I under arrest or something? No. Then I really got to run along. Look, I'll be back about midnight. Then we can go inside and be comfortable and talk about anything you want for as long as you want. That is, if you care to wait, Lieutenant. I might just do that, Mr. Roka. We'll see. That dress shop on the corner must be the one. Yeah. How come the lights are still on? Well, they had a style show. Spee's the partner in it. Hey, stop here, Becker. Yes, sir. And... <sighs> I'm waiting in the car for us. Come on, man. Right. <sighs> must be in the back. Mr. Spees, open the door. The police. Police? Well, come in, please. Thank you. I'm Lieutenant Guthrie. This is Sergeant Greb, Mr. Spees. Well, how do you do? Hello. How do you do? I suppose you've heard about Larry Zimmerman? Yes. Yes, I have. It's a terrible thing. Margaret, Miss Kinran, told me. In fact, she just called me from her place about five minutes ago. She's frightened. She thinks she's being followed. Yeah, I know. Uh, there's nothing to be worried about, Mr. Spees. The plane closed off of him. Uh, an office? Oh, <laughs> I see. Mr. Spees, we'd like to know how Miss Kenline got acquainted with Larry Zimmerman. Well, as a matter of fact, it was through me. Yes, Larry and I are quite good friends. We lived next door to each other, oh, for over a year. Do you know much about his business, Mr. Spees? How he made his living? Well, no, not much, actually. He was sort of an adventurer, really. Quite a successful one, I always thought. Very clever with money. Investments, so. A gambler, in the sense. In the market, you mean? Oh, yes. I, I always counted my pennies and envied the nerve Larry had the plane. Uh -huh. Mr. Spees, uh, do you happen to know if Miss Kenline had topaz earrings? We found one at Zimmerman's place. Well, oh, forgive me, Lieutenant Guthrie, but I really believe we should try to get in touch with Margaret and Miss Kenline. You see, I told her if she was afraid to stay home, she should leave and go to my place. That's Monroe Avenue, 4111. Now, I'd planned on leaving... All right, uh, maybe you're right. Uh, what's her number? Oh, it's Abby, 2344. Uh, on the phone's right there. Yes, yes, yes. Well, she's really quite upset, you know, Sergeant. It's got me worried, too, you know. Anything should happen tomorrow. I just don't know what I'd do. Really. Uh, yes, yes. I can appreciate how you feel. No answer, man? She must have already left. No answer. Hello? Hello. Hello. Who's it? Peters? Yeah. This is Lieutenant Guthrie. Oh, I... I lost her, Lieutenant. She's gone. I was slugged. A man. A man in a gray hat. A Homburg. <laughs> 
Tomorrow night, four more amateur songwriters will bring their new compositions to Jan Murray on Songs for Sale on CBS. And one will have his song chosen for nationwide publication and plugging. Among these contestants is a retired Army colonel whose West Point classmates numbered Marshall and MacArthur. Another will be a girl who was on the United States Olympic gymnastic team. The third is a theater usher, and the fourth, well, the fourth entry is a husband and wife team from Alabama. Songs for Sale brings you an hour of bright new music and bright new merriment by Jan Murray. Be listening for Songs for Sale tomorrow night on most of these same CBS stations. Phony, all right, Ben. Walter Ripken hasn't lived in the Beekman Plaza in five years. But we dug up a home address on him and uh, an office set up downtown. Yeah, well? Well, nothing, Ben. The office was just a bunch of stockbrokers catalogs and a wastebasket full of scribbled figures. Nothing more. And the house? Mrs. Ripken and two cats. Says she hasn't seen husband Walter in a week. And I don't think she cares if she ever sees him. Well, how'd you make out? Ripken's never been arrested. There's not a line on him in the files. So? So I'm stupid. Nah, now easy. I should have played it your way, Matt. Should have kept Margaret Kenline under arrest and locked up Walter Ripken just to keep her company. Maybe, but you didn't, Ben, so let's take it from there. Huh? <sighs> yeah. Might as well. Matt, look. One, Larry Zimmerman was killed. Two, Margaret Kenline could have killed him. I don't think so. Why not? Soft face, soft voice, Ben. No, no. Walter Rifkin. Matt. If Margaret Kenline did kill Zimmerman, why did Rifkin go after her? The missing 25 grand, maybe? Well, that's a good reason, Ben. That's a lot of dough. Yeah, I guess it is. It... Hello. Who? Oh, yeah, put him on, Sergeant. Manny Pomeroy, Matt. This will cost us a little, but it might be worth it. I talked to him about Rifkin earlier tonight. Yeah, he hello, Manny. Oh, fine, fine, thanks. Yeah? Well, what'd you find out? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, it can be important. A blonde, huh? Edith, somebody? Edith, you sure? <laughs> okay, okay, just checking. Yeah, but well, sure. Sure, it's a help, Manny, sure. Well, come around in the morning, will you? Yeah. So long. Good news, Ben? Yeah. Pomeroy says that Rifkin has a girlfriend in town, a blonde. An Edith, somebody. Edith DeRocca, Ben? Yeah. Edith DeRocca. The reason Larry Zimmerman tossed Margaret over. But this is a new angle, Matt. Edith tying into Rifkin. <laughs> You want to come along? It's the Marlboro Hotel. Well, I can't right away, Ben. I got to run a late lineup for the narcotics boy. Okay, look for you later, Matt. Oh, you again. I thought you guys worked in shift. I'd like to talk to you, Mr. Roker. I'm too tired. I still got to put my hair up. Mr. Roker, were you at Walter Rifkin's apartment tonight? Uh, since I saw you, I mean. No. You sure? I'm positive. You weren't in the neighborhood? I wasn't within a mile of a neighborhood. One of my men says different. Then tell him to ask for a pension. He's going blind. Now look, Mr. Roker. You look, Mr. Cop. When I left here, I went to the Broadmoor Bar and Grill. I never moved out of it until I came back here. And just in case you don't get around much, the Broadmoor is on Lancaster and East 39th, a couple of fat miles from East 60th and Chelsea. Now, anything else, Ben? If so, get a warrant and arrest me, huh? I'm very tired. <laughs> The next corner is 60th and Chelsea. A garage, a vacant lot, a duplex, and an apartment house. Okay, Becky. Wait here. Sergeant Grubb and I'll try the apartment house first. That should be it. Come on, man. Yeah. Say, Ben. Huh? That Edith DeRocca, do you think she'd tip off Lipkin? <laughs> I sure do. 
But I had the hotel desk refuse her an outside line if she asked for one, and I called in for a squad car to pick her up. She won't be in the way. Well, we'll see if this is it. Uh, the mailboxes are over there. Ben. Hmm? There's an elevator boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, can I help you, gentlemen? We're in the police department. Does Mr. Walter Rifkin have an apartment here? Yes, sir. He certainly does. 3D. Oh, yeah. Guess you don't want to be announced, though, huh? Why do you get that? Been any trouble? Oh, not exactly trouble. Well, what happened, son? Oh, nothing much. It was just a girl. I think he called her Margaret. Uh, maybe it was Marjorie. Anyhow, she ran out of here a little while ago. Came down the steps and got in a cab outside. Mr. Ripkin was after her? <laughs> he sure was. But she got away. Ripkin went back upstairs. Now, when was this? Oh, about ten minutes ago. You want to go up? I think we'd better. There you are. Bet you fellas go out on plenty of strange cases, huh? At all hours. I mean... <clears throat> Third floor to your right. Thanks. Go on back downstairs, son. Yes, sir. Cover me, man. Right. Who is it? The police, Mr. Rifkin. Lieutenant Guthrie. Well, Lieutenant... What brings you here? Mr. Roker was very helpful, Mr. Rifkin. Edith. She said she didn't want to be mixed up in a murder, Mr. Rifkin. May we come in? Why, sure, why not? I have nothing to hide. Come in, gentlemen. Living room straight ahead. Now, uh, this is far enough, Mr. Rifkin. What? The lieutenant means that pocketbook on the table there. Oh, that? Well, it's... it's... Uh, don't waste well, I... a lot of time, Mr. Rifkin. The pocketbook isn't that important. We know what happened. The elevator boy told us about Margaret Kenline running out of here. The police officer you sapped at Miss Kenline's apartment got a good look at you first. Now, look, Lieutenant, what I told you before was the... Not all of it. You didn't tell us about Edith DeRocca being your girlfriend. How does she fit in? Well, we... We were working together. I wanted Larry Zimmerman's files, his contacts, names, and numbers. I wanted the inside track that he had. I'd know what to do with it. Getting all that was Edith's job. What about Margaret Kenline? Why did you bring her up here? Because I think she killed Zimmerman, and whoever killed Zimmerman must have gotten the money that was supposed to be returned to me. Did you find it on her? No, no. She she got away from me before I could search her. You have looked through her purse there? Looked through ten times. It's not there. But what is there, Lieutenant, convinced me. I've got the right party. What do you mean? Uh, hand me the purse, man. I mean that I found a receipt in that pocketbook for a pair of earrings. A pair of topaz earrings. What do you know about that? All I know is what I heard a cop say over at Zimmerman's place. That one topaz earring was found on the rug under the body, right? Yeah. Let's see what's in it. Yeah. Compact lipstick. Wallet. Pack of lifesavers. Another lipstick. And a receipt. Made out to uh, Miss Margaret Kenline for uh, one pair of topaz earrings. Mm. Soft face, soft voice. Huh, man? My mistake. Mr. Rifkin. Does Margaret Kenlin know that you've seen this receipt? No. No, I didn't go through her stuff until after she ran. Good. Maybe she didn't run too far then. Yeah, her partner's place, Lloyd Spees, Monroe Avenue, 4111. Say, if, if you find her and she still has my money, I'll get it? Oh, probably, Mr. Rifkin. But exactly what you'll do with it for a while, I don't know. You, what do you mean? The lieutenant means that you're under arrest for assaulting an officer, among other things... Oh, Ben, do you want to have a second look at any of this stuff? No, I don't think so. Receipt's enough for me, Matt. I'm so... Hey, Matt. Hmm? Look at this. What, the receipt again? Yeah. Read it carefully, Matt. Then take Mr. Rifkin in, will you? I'll see you at the morning lineup. Well, Lieutenant Gessler, I didn't expect to see you again tonight. Well, come in. Thanks. Mr. Spees, has Margaret been here? Well, I know she had. Well, not tonight. I mean, you care for a drink with her? Spees. Yes, Lieutenant? She was here, wasn't she? Oh, no, no. She... Oh, well, what difference does it make? Yes, she was here about 20 minutes ago. She killed Larry, Lieutenant. She said that? Yes, when I mentioned the earring that you said was found in Zimmerman's apartment, she stopped trying to hide things. She she admitted everything. It wasn't very nice to hear. Jealousy was her motive, huh? Uh, 
I'll take that drink now, Mr. Speed. Yes, it was jealousy, Lieutenant. Uh-huh. And when she left, uh, she give you any idea where she was heading? No, she didn't, Lieutenant. No place at all is what she said when I asked her. Uh, what are you looking for, Lieutenant? No place at all could be suicide, Speed. I know, I know, but uh, she's a murderess, Lieutenant. I, I didn't try to stop her. Should I have? Could you have? Stopped her? Stopped her? And turned her over to me? Could you have done that, Spies? Well, of course, I suppose so. Why not, Lieutenant? For well, one good reason. Your life, Spies. You see, I think you murdered Larry Zimmerman. <laughs> me? Oh, no, 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 no. It was Margaret. <laughs> I told you that. Yes, I know, but I don't believe you. I even think Margaret's still here, someplace in this house. You haven't had time to take her no place at all. Yes, but the earrings, aren't they important? Don't they count? Sure they do, sure. More than anything else. More than you know. I have the receipt for those earrings. Yes, a receipt made out to Margaret, is that right? Right, to Margaret. For a pair of topaz earrings, which she rented. But rented? Mm-hmm. For one of the models in tonight's fashion show, no doubt. The fashion show speeds that you ran because Margaret wasn't going and you were. So it was you who had the earrings, not Margaret. And you who dropped one of them at Larry Zimmerman's. Again, not Margaret. Now, where is she, Spees? I, I don't know. She isn't here, I don't. But stay away from that door. Is she in the bedroom? Is she in the bedroom? Yes. Yes, she's tied up. But she's all right. I wasn't going to do anything until later. I had to kill Zimmerman. Why, Spees? Did you invest with him, too? Yes, it was only $2,000, whatever that was that I had in the world. When he told me I'd lost my money, I just went out of my mind. You know the rest? Yes. And Walter Rifkin's money, the 25000 that was in the envelope. You have it? Yes. It's inside. Lieutenant, <laughs> oh, I wish I'd never met Larry Zimmerman. Oh, I wish I'd never heard of him. Oh, no. Up. For before you pass the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. Listen again next week when we again bring you the lineup. May I have your attention, please? You people out there on the other side of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? <coughs> Thank you. My name is Greff, Sergeant Matt Greff. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identification, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure, you can make that Now, Mr. Hooker, your name? Mr. The Lineup, starring William Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Wally Mayer as Sergeant Matt Grebb, was written by Gene Lovett and Robert Mitchell, with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were John Stevenson, Ken Christie, Gene Bates, Irene Winston, Sidney Miller, Howard McNear, and Eddie Firestone. The lineup is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. Every Friday night on most of these same stations, you'll find two of CBS's most thrilling dramatic programs, Up for Parole and Broadway's My Beat. Up for Parole brings you hard-hitting, factual stories of men and women behind bars who are seeking another chance to live in human society. Broadway's My Beat brings you the adventures of Danny Clover, a plainclothesman along the Great White Way. Up for Parole and Broadway's My Beat are heard every Friday on CBS. Be listening, won't you? CBS, the star's address, the Columbia Broadcasting System.
welcome back. Well, the lineup script for uh, female suspects pretty much uh, the same as for males, uh, except for some differences, of course, the use of uh, matrons. Uh, somewhat interesting story behind that in uh, some parts of the country. Uh, Mary Sullivan, uh, who we'll actually meet uh, in a few weeks, I'll tell you more about that when we get to her, uh, was the first uh, head of, uh, pol of police women anywhere in the country. And one thing she tried to do was to get rid of the title of police matron. Uh, because the matrons actually earned less money than the male police officers, and they had a worse pension. So her effort was, you abolish that role, and everyone gets paid the same as a patrolman. You know, I've actually had the idea, too, of having listeners, because that lineup script's the same. I've actually got it at greatdetectives.net. Um, I've actually thought of uh, having uh, listeners read the... Uh, line up script and see who does perhaps the more interesting uh, performance. Uh, so if you would like to read your own version, you can call 201-991-4783 and we'll play it in the after show uh, segment. If you've got an interesting uh, twist on it, you can just read it into the voicemail or you can also send an MP3 uh, file along. Um, well, we do turn now to a couple quick show matters. Uh, coming up tomorrow... Uh, we have another episode of The Court of Last Resort. Uh, and, uh, you'll sure, you'll sure want to, uh, watch that if you can. Uh, it's a great, uh, mystery. And, uh, Joel comments on Facebook. I like this program. It has the Christmas of Dragnet, but a bit more drama and human interaction. It is well acted and the plots are interesting. Uh, I think that's true, particularly with today's, uh, Really good little mystery here. And Karen says, I love this program. Well, thanks so much, Karen and Joel. Appreciate your comments. Uh, that'll do it for today. We will be back tomorrow with a video theater episode. And then join us back here on Monday for the adventures of Frank Race. In the meanwhile, you can send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Yeah, you can follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and you can call us, 208-991-GREAT-D. That's uh, 208-991-4783. Uh, from Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off. <laughs>